Hi everybody, welcome today. Welcome to the Birch Light Broadcast. I'm Steve Rother. If you're not familiar with me, we're going to bring, bring the family together here in a very unusual way today. We have channels coming from the group. Uh, I do have a couple little error messages going off here, so if we're having a problem, we'll know here in a minute, but I think the stream is going out pretty well. Let me... I have... We have people in different parts of the world that actually check this, so let me just keep an eye there. Nope. No red flags yet, so I think we're I think we're in good shape. So anyway, if there are any problems with the live broadcast, please come right back uh, because as soon as it's over with, we it's it's available for archives, so you can see it as soon as it's over with. Okay, welcome today. Glad you're here. We have a very exciting day today. I can't wait to tell you what the group is going to talk about, and I will tell you normally. I'm able to send out an email and tell you a little bit of what the group has in mind or what they're going to be focused on. Today, they was kind of shifty. I will tell you, they wanted to let me know at the last minute, so I don't know. I do know we're going to be talking a little bit about the, um, uh, uh, about the, uh, the whole event that's coming up on April 8th, the eclipse. Absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, next month, by the way, I'm going to be interviewing Kathy Moran. Kathy Moran has written a new book called The Magical Heart of Trees. And I not only want to interview her about the book and the material in the book, but about, about the process of writing it. Uh, what did it take? I know it's a really big deal. I know many of you out there have written books or are writing books. So we want to make this available to you as much as possible. Let me check real quick, put my glasses on so I can, yep, we're good. I think we're going out just fine. So anyway, welcome today. Okay, so we've got Meg with us today. She's going to be talking about women being their authentic selves and how important that is. I have a feeling the channel will tie in with that. We've been talking a lot about the rise of feminine energy and how important that is, especially since this timeline cross that we had that lasted all the way through February. We are still feeling huge effects of that. And we, that may, again, I don't know exactly what the group's going to talk about today, so I can't really tell you that's going to be part of it, but I can tell you they, they're leaning in that direction. So anyway, let me change cameras here real quick because I know we'll have a little bit of a difficulty there with, with social media sometimes. I need, we need to put it right in the middle. There we go. Okay, so anyway, today we'll, we'll be uh, doing a live channel from the group uh, at the close here in just a little bit. We'll keep, we're trying to keep these short, so we've really trimmed them down. I really do appreciate Meg Adamson's segment every month. It always ties in really well with the material that we have. Uh, it's as if she's taken her energy off in a totally different direction now, and we're over here and we're still saying the same thing. It's, uh, it, it's an amazing time to be here. So anyway, thanks, Meg, for, for being here with us. We'll play Meg's segment here in just a second, but I do want to just tell everybody a couple things that were going on here that are really important for all of us. Number one, the group has been very concerned about the level of exhaustion coming from different places and light workers in general. And they are aware of that because they that's what we tap into. We tap into the overview of what is taking place and what that energy radiance is coming off, how, what that feels like. Uh, and one of the things that they're saying is that we're reaching critical levels. Um, in, in Europe, they have something called burnout. When you reach critical levels in your job or whatever it is you do, you go on this burnout thing, which has basically removed you from it. They've got a series of things that they do to work with burnout. Um, we're, we are having people that are very close to burnout in, 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 as light workers. And because of all the division going on, everybody trying to move you in one way or the other, all the crazy stuff that's going on. So we wanted to provide something for that. The group suggested that we do a live event. We have that set up currently for Belgium. We will be doing it in Leuven, Belgium on the 27th and 28th, I think. Yeah, pretty good. It's 27th or 28th, I'm pretty sure, because yeah. Anyway, 27th and 28th, check the calendar. How's that? 
Anyway, I'm very much looking forward to it. We have a wonderful family that's come together there over and over and again. That many of them live in Belgium or Holland or Germany, or some of the places that they come from. So we invite you to come join us. It is a human angel activation is what this is. And what this is meant to do is basically revive your spirit to be able to bring you back into who you are. So when you walk out of there, you not only walk out of there floating because of all the experiences you have, but it stays. So in other words, you walk out with a different attitude. You walk out with a different pace, a different rhythm. Every aspect of that is, is designed in that way. So we're going to have a lot of exercises, a lot of activations. On top of that, we're going to start having live music at some of these, and we'll have it here. Uh, Rudy uh, will be with us. Many of you know Rudy. He's been with us here in the, in the, in the Dutch team for quite some time now, quite some number of years. Uh, wonderful musicians going to be playing uh, organ, uh, going to be playing, uh, you know, I'll just leave it up to him. He plays good. He's, he's a musician, so he plays a lot of instruments. But whatever it is he wants to do, we're going to have behind the live channels. You will have live music. On top of that, we're going to have a little segment in the evening, hopefully if we get this all set up right, where we can have some live music. And I'm, taking my, I'm bringing my guitar. Uh, we'll bring some stuff there. So we'll, 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 I'll let you know more about that as it gets a little closer. But check it out. We will be there in Leuven, uh, Belgium, for two days on the 27th and 28th. I'll get it right. Anyway, that's, that's coming up in April. So, and I'm not doing any, I've had several people ask already, I'm not doing any private sessions in April. Uh, we just, I just have too many things going on. I'm getting ready to go back over to Belgium uh, to, yeah, to be over there. So anyway, obviously, so I'll be, I'll be doing the seminar over there, but I'll be over there for a little while as well. So anyway, welcome today. I'm glad everything's going well. Looks like we're going out fine. So I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave everything up to that at that point. Um, and leave it up to the group as to, as to how, they want to, uh, how they want to do with things. So anyway, welcome today. It is springtime in most of the world. We're just thrilled to be having all this brand new energy, this beautiful stuff coming out in the ways that it is. Uh, uh, I know here in, in Las Vegas, we're, uh, things are blooming like crazy. I'm going to have to start cutting the bushes in my yard right away because they're, they're just exploding into this new energy. So anyway... It's a great time to be here. So anyway, let me push the right button this time and we'll get Meg going. But anyway, wanted to welcome Meg Adamson again. Right after this, we will go into the live channel and we'll keep this fairly short. Uh, these are going to run anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour because we know your time's valuable. We want to keep that. And yet we want to keep you up to date on what's going on with the family. Now, before we play Meg, I do want to talk about one other thing that we're going through. Uh, we are separating out Lightmaster and the focus events. So their Lightmaster still get all the focus events themselves. That's no problem. But the focus events are starting to take on some new flavor. And I'm going to present the, the focus events, by the way, are events that we do usually two or three days a month. Uh, I've started doing three days a month because people get more out of it, it seems. They're, they're able to come back and, and get more. We didn't raise the price. We left the price the same. And we start doing three days of a focus event, whatever it was. We've, we've done a couple of them this way already. We have did the, the channeling exercise, which worked out really well. It's wonderful. It's in the store, too, if you've missed it. You can always go check that one out. Uh, but it's, uh, the, the whole idea of opening to channel, basically. So you think you can't channel, huh? And try to work at it from that aspect to be able to show you different ways of channeling. Very, very big success for us. We've heard a lot of feedback from it. Thank you all for writing in your feedback, too. We'll try to get back to you when we can, but we do appreciate it. Uh, so anyway, uh, and let us know. That's the other thing. Right, drop us a help desk ticket. Uh, send us an email. There's different ways you can reach us here to let us know how you're doing. And there's comments that you can put on the page having to do with the uh, specific uh, seminar that you're doing. Okay, so with that, we have a new one coming up this next month that we haven't talked about. And I just want to tell you about it. I did send out an email about it. But this is, kind of, this is healing your past lives. Now, we all know that we are energy, which is really what this is all about. So 
if we look at energy from a, from a scientific standpoint, it basically says one thing about energy, energy never dies. It only changes form. Energy is constantly changing form from one form to another. So there is something that we call resistance here on this planet that on this side of the veil we have resistance, on that side, at home we don't have that resistance. But anyway, the resistance does diminish that equation a little bit, but for the most part, energy never really dies. The, the lights that I have on here that you're seeing on my face, those were, came from electricity, which came from a generator, which turned around magnets, which took the magnetic energy and turned it into electricity, which turns it into light. Now it's turning into light and heat, probably too, because it'll build up in here. So basically it's converting it to another thing. It's gonna go up in the ionosphere, it'll rain. We'll see water come down, the water will turn the turbines, which turn the generators again, we got a big circle. So basically energy never dies. We are energy, we are spiritual energy. And we are the same thing. As a result, we have past lives, it's that simple. And we don't remember them because that's part of the veil. That's part of the deal when you come to pretend to be a human is you have to go through the veil and you have to leave your memory in the veil. That's the, they say, we didn't make up the rules. They said, you made up the rules. <laughs> so anyway, so that, that's the interesting part about it. Now, what happens is many times we're leading our lives with all these things that we react to and we don't know why we're reacting. Or we really don't like this. Are we really, oh, I can't stand this over here. We, we really feel repulsed about certain things. Other friends of mine love that, whatever that is. They, they love those things. So you're actually missing out on a lot of things because of the way the body suit works and because of the way that these things land in that body suit, which come from previous lifetimes. We're gonna spend three days going through that. We're gonna give you the information in the first day. We'll tell you a little bit about what the process is, although we will have activations each day and be able to take you through some of your past lives. Second day is gonna be heavy on taking you into your past lives. We'll, we'll probably do at least three of them, separate times, separate focuses, way of looking at different things to bring them up, only to bring them to your attention. And then the third day, we heal it. We change it. We give you the secrets of shifting the energy, what that's like and what we're going to do with it. And that'll be the healing day. So it'll be the first three days. I think it's the, it is the 15th, 16th, and 17th of April. So that's 15, 16, and 17. If you're a light master, you get this free of charge. So come join us in Lightmaster too. We are moving mountains in Lightmaster. We're starting, to, we're starting to really get into some interesting things together too. It's a fairly small group uh, and yet it's, del it's all over the globe. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're less than 200 people. So we're, we're a fairly small group, but we're all over the globe. So we reach in different ways and uh, collect things in different ways. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to join us. If you get a chance, come join us in Lightmaster. We also have the intro to Lightmaster series where you can actually go in and watch all the videos that catch you up to date as to what I'm talking about and what the group is talking about in Lightmaster. Because otherwise you can get a little lost because we just jump right into some of the more important things. So anyway, with that, I'll bring in Meg. We'll come back and right after that, we'll do the live channel from the group for the month of April, 2024. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks for being here with us. Aspapo. Hi, everybody. So nice to be here with you again this month. Let's jump right in. What I want to talk about this month is the importance for women to live authentically. I've been doing some research on cancer for clients that I'm currently working with, and I came across some staggering information that I felt was worth sharing. During his more than two decades of research into the mental aspects of cancer, experimental psychologist Lawrence Lachan conducted personality studies of 455 cancer patients an in-depth therapy of 71 terminal cases. He found that this condition of despair, as he calls it, named to distinguish it from the more commonly recognized form of depression, was reported as predating the disease by 68 of his 71 cancer patients in therapy. 
but by only three of 88 other clients who did not have cancer. In The Will to Live, Arnold Hutchnicker wrote, Depression is a partial surrender to death, and it seems that cancer is despair experienced at the cellular level. Dr. Bernie Siegel states that men are generally better able to express anger while women tend to hold it in and become depressed. That was really important when I read that because historically, women have been conditioned to believe that it's unacceptable for them to express anger or frustration. We are still trying, there are TED Talks still coming out to this day about how we deal with gender bias. In other words, women are supposed to be soft and nurturing. They do not, they're not seen in a favorable way if they express the stronger emotions that are acceptable that men, when men do are considered leadership attributes. Also, right into the 1940s, even early 50s, women who were reaching a midpoint in their life into menopause and having hormonal changes, and they started expressing their emotions with what their bodies were going through, were being committed. So it became unsafe even for women to express their emotion and repress it. I came across even more staggering information when Dr. Siegel reported that a patient who developed cancer after her children left home expressed in a letter to him, I had an empty place in me and cancer grew to fill it. The cause may simply be gradual dissatisfaction with the role of housewife, Siegel states, if that role is unfulfilling for the woman. It's not the role itself, but rather the feeling of being trapped. So now we can see a cancer diagnosis as a course correction in hypnotherapy, a blueprint of one repressed expression that, if corrected, leads to healing and a brand new expression of life. These statistics really blew my mind. Housewives get 54% more cancer than the general population and 157% more than women who work outside the home. 157% more. When the results were first published by William Morton of the University of Oregon, researchers assumed there must be a carcinogen in the kitchen, and most resources were spent there. Very little resources have ever been given to researching how women can feel trapped by one defined role in life and not living the life she wants, but instead a performance. So I was just speaking about this recently in my Saturday group shop, group workshops rather, living authentically versus performatively. And it's kind of interesting with the younger generations, our kiddos and social media and how performative social media is. There's, a re there's research now that shows that women who earn salaries or are self-employed have less cancer than housewives. And cancer is more prominent, listen to this, in convents than in prisons, because in prisons they can express more emotion. Women historically have had a lack of emotional outlets. It's been much more acceptable for men to get angry than for women. Siegel believes to some extent that cancer is not a primary disease. It is, a part, it is partly a reaction to a set of circumstances that weaken the body's defenses. Really important. Siegel believes, and I absolutely couldn't agree more, that effective treatment must get a patient to become the kind of person who can live comfortably and happily in spite of such stresses. In the book, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, authored Richard Bach wrote, here's a test to find whether your mission on earth is finished. If you're alive, it isn't. So this got me thinking. Happiness and emotional well-being is medicine. For women living a life of her own versus a life of performance for others sends signals to the cells, effectively communicating with the immune system. It is this communication that keeps the immune system strong. Our ability to express ourselves and create in ways that bring joy to our lives and then to others. We live effectively and authentically. Science is showing that if we do not feel that, 
in whatever form that takes. So if work brings you joy or traveling brings your freedom or contribution to others through service or volunteer work or whatever it is for you, it doesn't even have to be a job per se. It's how you find joy in your life, your way, your authentic expression of you, your innate skills, your innate gifts, your talents, your abilities, what makes you happy. It's following that voice inside of you that guides you, that knows, that innate wisdom. But what happens is we, we don't. We keep running into conditioned stories that block us from believing that it's possible. And it's those beliefs that need to be reframed. It is this mismatch that, I, that this, I want this, but I don't believe I can have that that creates an illness environment where we start to withdraw, retreat, unable to express frustration or anger, and that creates the environment of feeling hopeless. This signals the immune system with the opposite of life messaging. It begins signaling faster death messaging. In fact, Dr. Kisson, an internist, studied a group of smokers comparing those who had lung cancer with those having other diseases. Based on personality tests, Kissin found the cancer patients had poorer outlets for emotional discharge and concluded that the more repressed a person was, the fewer cigarettes were needed to cause cancer. Morgan's Jensen of the Yale Psychology Department showed that defensive repressors die faster than patients with a more realistic outlook. Those who say, I'm fine, even though their life is in a shambles, their relationship is a mess, their kids are struggling with drugs, they mask it all and they say, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's okay. I'm okay. Jensen feels this behavior dysregulates and exhausts the immune system because it is confused by the mixed messages. That right there is why I became a clinical hypnotherapist. Not a hypnotist, not a psychologist, but a clinical hypnotherapist. How does the immune system compare that messaging? What's the mechanism? It's the subconscious mind. Its job is to govern the body. It directs the autonomic nervous system. And the ANS regulates both innate and adaptive immunity through the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches. And an imbalance in this system can determine an altered inflammatory response. So you can't trick your immune system because its direction is coming from your subconscious mind that knows every thought that you have. So that means that living a life that feels fulfilling isn't a pipe dream, isn't something that's out there, isn't a maybe or a future possibility. As we age, it's a life requirement. We simply must live our lives each day with some happiness, some joy, some laughter and fulfillment. We can have the big dreams, but along with them every day, creating that journey, it has to be filled with joy. It ha we have to express some form of joy and happiness and fulfillment because we're evolving and growing and expanding and radiating, or we're internalizing, we're repressing, we're engaging sympathetic drive, stress response, driving inflammation. When we pretend we're fine when we're not, when we walk around with beliefs that are very self-negative, world negative, humanity negative, hope negative or hopeless, our immune systems are responding. If we deny our deep desires, our true feelings, while pretending our life is enough, that we're good when we're not, that mixed messaging opens the gateway to overriding the immune system. It weakens and becomes exhausted, constantly fighting our own negative limiting beliefs. We are self-fulfilling prophecies. And a diagnosis like cancer, scientists are realizing more and more every year, is a call to live a different life. We each have a purpose here. None have to be grandiose to change the world. We do that first inside of ourselves, and that ripples out. So every single one of us are needed. 
We each have that voice inside of us that guides us. And if we can learn to be brave, if we can learn to be courageous, if we can learn to trust that innate wisdom within us, what we've been conditioned away from, trained away from, if we can learn to investigate and sit with uncomfortable feelings and emotions, express them without needing permission or feeling guilt or shame, we need to do some housekeeping, ironic as that sounds, of those stories that we tell ourselves of why we can't have what we want, why we can't live the way that we want, why we don't deserve it, why it doesn't work for us, why we're the one exception to the rule. We're not. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You are one of 8 billion people on this planet. That sounds like a lot and yet 1 in 8 billion is magnificent and miraculous. If we can learn to trust that, if we can learn to trust that there's a path for us, there's a purpose for us, and we are supposed to be learning and growing and finding the value in that learning, but that it was never supposed to be personal. It was never supposed to equate to our identity and that we can live however we choose to live. And that may require courage on our part. That may require a lot of moves in masculine energy and trust in feminine energy, that innateness within us that will guide us to where we're going. Then we are living a life with meaning. We are expressing ourselves. That is a regulated nervous system. That is a healthy body that is designed to manage stress. We're not, humans aren't fragile. We are actually extraordinarily strong, but it is the everyday beliefs that we have conjured up since we were small children and compounded over time. Those stories that we tell ourselves why it won't work for us that keep us feeling sad, that eventually break down our immune system and that becomes a diagnosis that is well worth considering. Is it worth it to clean up all the emotions and beliefs that we're carrying around? That heavy load of your past? Because those stories do not align with your purpose and your plan. And that mixed messaging is exhausting your immune system. What a gift illness truly is as we learn its messaging and we find the courage to course correct to live our lives authentically, to give ourselves permission to be all that we are for ourselves first and not performatively, authentically. It's a course correction, one that we make sure we can't miss. And I thought that was a conversation very worthy of having. So if I can ever help you in any way, I am happy to do so. You can reach out to me through the website, megadamsonhypnotherapy.com. Thank you for this conversation. Have a wonderful rest of your month. Happy Easter if you celebrate, and I'll see you next month. Bye for now. Thank you, Meg. Oh, man. She nailed me. She nailed me with that uh, I'm fine stuff, I'll tell you. <laughs> Fascinating stories and, and really interesting things about uh, cancer being more prevalent in convents than it is in prisons. Really interesting stuff. Thank you, Meg. Appreciate it. Good job. Okay, we're going to go right into the channel from the group here in just a second. I'm going to bring up a little logo so I can breathe a little bit and just kind of Step out of myself for just a minute. I'll be right back with a group of nine. A spa for everybody. Greetings from home, dear ones. We join you this day from afar 
But we look at you and watch the magical game that is unfolding on your planet. A wonderful time to be here on this time, to come together to celebrate unity. You see, dear ones, we see you quite differently than you see yourselves. We see that you are creator beings, unaware that you are creator beings. But there are some fascinating things that take place with that, some of which are right in front of you today. So we'll share a little bit with that with you. But first, let us take you back just a couple of months to remind you of this incredible timeline cross that you had with this beautiful planet by the name of Aris. Aris has balanced quite a bit in a very short time. The planet herself has changed quite a bit. Planet Earth is trying to make those shifts now, not being quite as successful as Aris, but still had the nudge, the energy, because of that timeline cross, it was incredible to see that there was almost a release of the energy which was holding everything in place, which allowed for the advancement to take even further motions. Well done, well done. The feminine energy is also clearly on the planet and here to help you in many different ways. So the anchoring of that feminine energy is the most difficult part. And because of your customs, because of the ways that you have created your world, now, we've mentioned that Aris has created it in the opposite direction, which is kind of interesting because you can see how many of these attributes have blended together in different ways. Now, it's quite a bit different because even on Aris, the women still had the children, which was a physical attribute and actually carries out throughout nature in many ways in those areas that are divided by duality that allows you to fully see your creation abilities. But dear ones, when you come together and you focus on something together, it creates magic. The, the incredible amounts of energy that are seeing you, almost as if all these beings are watching what is taking place, you're being called into action when you come together and focus on something together. You are creator beings. You are God. But the challenge with it is you have to deal with an ego. The ego tells you, oh, you're not as good as the others. Or the ego tells you you're way too good as the others. Whatever it is, it's a challenge and a balance that every earthling must deal with. Not easy. But then no one said that this life was going to be easy. But we did tell you that you will enjoy it. And that's another aspect that's coming up. You have opportunities directly in front of you to come together and to focus on something connected. Now, you also have many things which are trying to divide you. Your politics are absolutely amazing for us to watch on this side of the veil. How successful people are being at dividing you making you think that you are on opposite sides. And if you all stand back, you all want the same thing. You're just trying to figure out the easiest ways to do it. But it's a fascinating view from our perspective to watch the division and the craziness that takes place in this sometimes. But dear ones, you are spirits. And we tell you the feminine is rising. The expression of feminine power is going to take a new anchor on planet Earth. And it does so many times in ways that you wouldn't expect. You see, we mentioned that you're creator beings. We mentioned that when you come together and all focused on something, anything, that magic happens. Universal magic is unleashed at that moment and sent in whole different directions, everywhere, simultaneously. Take a breath, dear ones. So what is that? What can you decide on that you all can agree on, that you can focus on for a short time? You don't need to worry about that. Those things are taking place now. The idea is lend your energy to the magic. We're talking about April 8th. You have a solar eclipse 
which is going to be shown as a full eclipse in many parts of the eastern United States and other parts of the world as well. But why is that so important? Because it takes you out of your division, dear ones. You are creator beings. If you expect a miracle from April 8th, you will create it. Are you ready? It's an event. It's a cosmic event. It's an alignment. Very simple, a momentary alignment as one passes in front of the other to block the sun for the moment. But the fascinating part is you can turn it into something magical. You are creator beings, each and every one of you. And what you can balance between your head and your heart will manifest in front of you. This is a perfect opportunity to bring humanity back together and simply focus on the beauty that is taking place in front of you. That enhances its reach, increases the vibrations in all directions. It works. Take a breath, dear ones, and just anchor that light. Beautiful. We tell you, dear ones, many of you are so empathic that you feel everyone else around you. We have spoken of this before. But where much of the challenge comes from, dear ones, is that you'll pick up energy from other people, other things, other events that you wish to balance because it's your nature to balance things. And if you can't or if you're unable to balance it in some way, it lands in your body as a stress wherever you store stress in your physical body. And of course, that can turn into other things down the road. But the idea is to start learning ways to release that stress. And part of that has to do with satisfying your own needs. You see, as you came in as an empathic being, you feel everyone else. So to actually take something from someone, you would feel that they're lo losing that because you believe in duality and polarity and all the other illusions of planet Earth. But in truth, dear ones, it's a fascinating point because what takes place is when you exchange, it creates more energy. It's real simple. Yes, you don't have the proof of that yet. You will. You'll understand that in time. But right now, the main aspect of it is to find your needs. Start satisfying yourself. Start knowing that you come first. Now, that's very difficult for empathic beings to understand. In fact, in June, we're going to actually be doing an entire event on your boundaries, on making healthy boundaries in your life, energetic boundaries. It doesn't mean that you close people off. It means that you have boundaries where you let people in and you can choose. But it also means that you choose the boundaries, not them, not whoever's in front of you or who you are working with. Now you have capabilities beyond your understanding. And we ask you to put yourself first in every aspect. You know, the keeper flew all over the world for many years and still is flying. And when you get on an airplane, they go through the whole routine where they talk about this and that and the exit points and all the things that they tell you you must listen to. And at one point, they tell you that if the cabin loses pressure, that an oxygen mask will drop. And then they say something similar always right after that. They say, if you're traveling with a small child or anyone else who needs assistance, please put on your oxygen mask first. Now, that's an interesting concept. The truth of the matter is, dear ones, most parents will focus on their children first, especially empathic children, people. Very difficult to do. But the reality is the child will survive much longer without the air than the human, than the adult will. There's a reason that you're told that. But in reality, you must put yourself even before your children everywhere. You must put yourself 
before your partner, you have to confess. It's not easy for an empath who's dealing with a balanced ego to try and know that they must stand at the front of the line. They feel like they are being selfish. And by doing so, they cut everybody else off. They make everyone else wait a little bit. When in truth, you're filling your basket so that you can turn around and give more to other people behind you. It must be done. The critical point, dear ones, to put yourself first. So what is a healthy boundary? Well, you'll be working with that. We'll share it with you. The short version is very simple. This is simply to be able to say no with love in your heart and a smile on your face. Straight from the authentic self. Straight from your spirit. Because you address your needs. You address every aspect of who you are in this moment. That's perfect. So take April 8th, coming up very soon. Take any event where people are looking outside of themselves at something taking place somewhere and create magic with it. Because you have that capability. You are the magicians of the game board. Very simple. Do you believe in magic? We do. We do. We share much with you on that. The reality is you are the magicians that have done this over and again. And here you are playing the game again. Many of you as last timers earning enough points to go to the next level, whatever that is. But here you are firmly investing your hearts in planet Earth to take you through this next level, to graduate to another level of existence in this game. It's why you are here. It's why you came back right now. And you've got all these beings that are here, even watching this now, that have traveled some 300 years back from the future to be in this exact moment, in this junction of time space. Well, you made it. Fulfill your needs. Know that you're not being selfish by being authentic. Know that your spirit is playing a game inside of a physical body. The physical body has needs. You address those most of the time, but your emotional body has needs. Sometimes you just want to get angry, but you don't know if that will be accepted. Please allow yourself to get angry. Be the human in every aspect, but play the game and play it well, dear ones. As we mentioned, you are the magicians of the game board. We can't wait to see what you do next. It's going to be an exciting ride. The reality is what you are doing here in the next several months will set the energy for the next 50 years on planet Earth. That's why you wanted to be here. Ride the wave. Enjoy the journey. You're right on time. Well done. Enjoy this journey, dear ones. Enjoy April 8th. Make it something very special. Make it unique. Make it your spirit. Let your spirit come alive. The actual connections that the universe is trying to tell you. It's almost like a cosmic wink from the universe to let you know that you are in the right place at the right time. Then walk it from there. Take that energy and walk firmly in your confidence of who you are as a fulfilled being on this planet. That's the imprint that will set everything into motion going forward. Well done, dear ones. We can't wait to watch what happens here next. But the energies are certainly lining up. You have created it. It is a magical time. And what of all those places on Earth where you will not be seeing this 
eclipse of the solar. Well, in truth, it doesn't make any difference. You can blend your energy into this magic the same way, for it is a cosmic wink. It's only seen in certain places, no problem, but it's happening everywhere. Enjoy the journey, dear ones. Know that the magic is within you. We are here to reflect you, to hold the mirror in front of you so that you can remember who you are and your magic for a short time. Enjoy the journey, dear ones. You are awakening from the dream every moment. And every moment is getting more exciting for us to watch. Welcome home, dear ones. We are the group of nine. We are complete. And so are you. Know that every step you take on this earth is leaving a trail of light behind you. For you are teachers, healers of the greatest magnitude. Well done. Fulfill the light. Treat each other with respect. Nurture one another. And play well together as you step up into the next level. Aspabo, dear ones. Thank you for taking your power. Thank you.